Welcome back to the channel. I'm Jax, your everyday music commentator. And today I'm with a special guest. Uh, he is a producer, singer, songwriter, and a owner of his of a label. And personally, somebody, somebody I really fuck with. <laughs> today we're with Gold Buddha. Yes, sir. Hey, this Gold Buddha, one of you really dunk with shit. Yeah, I already know. <laughs> First of all, happy, happy for you to be here. And two, I kind of, I kind of want to dive in on like who you are. You know, I, I mean, I did a little bit of my own research, but you know, some people might not know exactly who you are. So I kind of want to dive in uh, with, you know, what you do and you know what you're about. Well, I mean, first of all, uh, uh, you know, like feeling blessed on this opportunity to like, you know, express myself. And I know Cajun culture, you know, he's been supporting K-pop scene and the K-hip-hop scene in general. That's been a, a, a huge strength. To our, to our culture, I feel like. And, you know, as of myself, like, you know, I grew up in Miami, Florida for about nine years and moved to New York for college. So in total, I, I stayed in the U.S. for about 13 years mm. and then came back here and it's been about nine years now. Um, my English got rusty a little bit, but then um, most of the music that I create was based up, based on the, the memories and experiences I had uh, uh, back in Miami. Uh, it, within that experience, you know, there's a heavy uh, Dirty South influence coming in, but also um, I got the EDM culture coming in as well, because, you know, Ultra Music Festival is, is held in Miami. So I remember uh, me as a b-boy, I used to roam around the city. Um, all my, all my uh, homies were hippies, so we were like, you know, just uh, a camping in the site, like here and there, like mm -hmm. uh, drive around, going to different festivals and have fun. And as a b-boy, um, like in the hood, like, you know, trying to um, like break with my friends, um, performing in the church um, and whatnot. So I, I experienced a lot of like diverse culture back in Miami, because, you know, where yeah. I used to grow up. Um, so I came from public school um, uh, uh, Michael, uh, Michael Crop, that was the name of, of my high school. Uh, we had 50% Hispanic and 40% black and 10% white and Jewish and, and 0.1% Asian. Mm -hmm. So within that setup, uh, I got to learn a lot of new culture, like right when I came in, cause there was no Korean student in my school. So like I kind of forced to learn the culture and language yeah. right away. Yeah. So that's how, how, how I started. And the, talking about the b-boy culture that I soaked in, like, um, thankfully, uh, they really welcomed me in general because, you know, back then, uh, Korean b-boy scene was merging. And uh, within the b-boy scene, like, a lot of Korean uh, uh, b-boy crews has been, like, popping up and became, like, the, the center of attentions. And they, they really welcomed me for that. So in return, I try to um, prove myself um, in, in my school society, uh, uh, trying to show myself who, who I really am. Um, so from Jackie Chan Son to uh, Fast and Furious Han, so that was my nickname that <laughs> I used to have back then. Yeah. Everybody used to call me Jay back in the day because because my real name is Jay Wu Chung mm, okay um, but because of my last name Chung like a lot of people thought um, um I'm coming from um, China so I kind of uh, have to prove myself uh, uh, that that's not the case like I'm from Korea but back then um Korea was not on the map uh, when it comes to understanding so um yes yeah, ambassador like I really I, I work really hard to uh spread my my culture to my friends such as like taekwondo to like korean uh bibimbap mm -hmm. um like you know food food culture and then e even a hip-hop culture too because in korea like you know that's that's when uh, korean hip-hop the first generation was already starts to thrive so um first generation uh, uh hip-hop crew in Korea, like such as Drunken Tiger to 
uh, MC Sniper, oh, yeah. or even Crown J. Um, they're like one of the um, like representative figure for me to introduce. This is this is what Korean hip hop is to my mm -hmm. friends. But meanwhile, um, uh, the Dirty South culture, like you know, the back then, uh, the Lil John was popping. Uh, Lil John and Lisa boys, like Young Blood, uh, Trick Daddy, yeah, um, even Pitbull. I mean, honestly, like Pitbull was my favorite favorite, but you know, still, you know, it was rapped in Miami City, like. Um, and a lot of like reggaeton music. Yeah, I feel like I was one of the first Korean person uh, who who got influenced a lot from the Hispanic culture, like the reggaeton music. So a little bit of gang culture and a little bit of like people and culture. Uh, uh, and I'm coming from the art background, so um, a lot of, a lot of my friends were um, diverse in that way. For for me. When it came to uh, came to hip hop and even even why I'm even in this space in the first place, uh, one I have to shout out. Uh, she's not here right now, but she would be here. Is Aya um, because uh, we we create this channel together. Oh, okay. And she she would be here right now, but she 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 got stuff going on. But two, yeah. I am a person that's really invested within the culture. Like the culture is really important to me. Hence, hence why the name is Cajun Culture. When I was young, you know, I was like the only, I was on, I was the only black kid in the neighborhood. With oh, okay. one of the like, one of the few black kids in, in my neighborhood. And, you know, most, most of my neighborhood was Hispanic uh, dominated. I was the only kid with a, with a basketball hoop <laughs> on the, oh. on the cul-de-sac, you know? Yeah, and, yeah. And when I, when I go outside, it's like, you know, if they if they they want to hoot with me, I gotta play soccer with them. You know, oh, it was that yeah, type of thing. You know? Yeah, yeah. You know, that's uh, that's how that's how we communicate. That's how we communicated, and we got to understand each other because we were willing to like step step in each other's, you know, step in each other's lanes. And for me, right. that that really helped me because like it made me understand like, yo, there's there's all these different cultures, and. You know, instead of instead of me being closed minded to it, I'm very open minded. With that, you know, I started to get into like anime and stuff. Oh yeah. Because at that time, like I like I said, um, I was really just trying to get into all these different cultures because it fascinated me. And you know, I'm a I'm a people person, so I love I love learning about people and learning about culture and all that type of shit. I love that. Yeah. And also at that time, I was really into like drawing, really into doing art and stuff so i was watching i was watching anime to try to draw the characters and all that type of stuff oh, man that that's that became an essence of of your humbleness yeah like because you, you start to you know accept and appreciate all the cultures you know diverse perspective and then uh i caught on to k-pop mm -hmm. i really i, I kind of don't really like the term k-pop because it's like it's just pop music but it's Korean. right like, yeah, 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 yeah. Like because because when I speak about K-pop, I'm thinking K-pop as in like the culture, you know? Yeah. Because there's a difference between American pop and Korean pop. I got into K-pop in in the cultural aspect because mm -hmm. I was seeing how it's so much like so different from American pop. There was there was a performance, there was a dress, there was yeah. a, a a a makeup a, um aspect to it. There's so many different pieces and parts to it that just didn't exist in American right, right. American pop to that extent. Like talking about every every those little elements, like I feel like K-pop's been working really hard for themselves to get uh, a certified and, and recognized because you know talking about like performance and like choreos and and the looks and fashion and and the, even with the quality of the videos. Like they've been they've been working really hard like to to you know perfect on on every aspect of this whole like industry you, you know what i'm saying like because back then like um because you know this the scene in us it, it, it was much of a free form we whilst uh, uh k-pop um aesthetics in general is much more like controlled but but on the other hand it's like trying to uh, uh make a perfect like presentation i guess 
Yeah, every every piece has its own meaning. Right, right. You know, over over in American pop is like uh, you if if you have the look, you can you can do it or you know, you you, you have the and attitude. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like you, if you have the look, you can okay, we can work something out or if you have the um if you have a voice, eh, maybe we can work something out. But but when it um when I saw K-pop, I was like, okay, you gotta have this, and you gotta yeah. have that, cause if you don't, you're not you're not gonna make it that far in the industry at all.